Okay, so our next task that we said we would do is modify the user model to include the first name, the last name, and the birthday of the user. And by first name and last name, I mean the real first name and last name. So how would we go about doing that? Because identity user is a model and class within the identity framework, and we clearly don't have access to it, right? We only have access to the pages. So how would we go about doing that? In order to extend the identity's user class, we have to create a new class called whatever you want, but I'm going to call mine application user. And this class will extend identity user, as I have just done. So I typed in identity user after the double uh, colon, which is C Sharp's way of saying extend. And then I press control period. And we have imported it. Now I'm going to create the additional attributes I wanted to um, add to the identity user class. String first name. Now we'll add last name. They're both strings. And finally, the birthday, which would be a date, time, and birth date. I believe that's how you spell it. And then save. Okay. However, there's much more to it than just extending the class. First, we have to go to startup.cs and make sure that our default code references our new application user code rather than the identity user code because we are basically um, creating a new user who has the same properties as identity user called application user plus more properties. So as you can see here under our configure services method in startup.cs we have a services.add default identity identity user, as well as other associated configurations. So let's change that. So as you can see, I added two lines of code, which actually looks like four because it's split up. And I'm going to comment out the old segment of code that referenced identity user. In C sharp, you use the slash star and then end it with a star slash in order to do a multi line comment. But you should know that already. Um, okay, so as you can see here, I basically updated um, my services to add the identity application user, which has a red squiggly line because we haven't imported that library yet. So I imported that class and that namespace into my startup.cs. And then we're saying that identity role is associated with application user, as well as the add entity framework store is application DB context is going to work with application user and the default token provider, which uh, we're not going to get into right now because they'll just confuse you. And furthermore, for the sign-in manager, we associated it with uh, application user instead of identity user in order to uh, allow things to work more smoothly. Okay. So now we have to go to our program not our program.cs, we had to go to our application DB context. I believe there's a cleaner way to do this. This is just some code I found on the net, but uh, um, it works, so 
let's go to our application DB context. And as you can see here, we have identity DB context and it's refer referencing identity user. So we need to change that from identity user to application user. Okay, so we have modified the startup.cs. Let's write this down in case it gets uh, hard to remember. So first we modified the notes class. Did we? We want our notes class to point to application user instead of identity user. Okay. Next, we modified our startup.cs class. And then finally, we updated the application DB context class to use our new user. And those are the actual CS classes we need to update. But it doesn't end there. Now we have to update the identity. Okay, so to find where identity user is still referenced in code, I'm going to use a little feature of Visual Studios. I'm going to go to Edit, Find and Replace, Find in Files, and I'm going to look in the entire solution for the keyword identity user and click Find All. What this will do is give me a list of every single file that references the identity user in order for me to update it and where I have to update it. So as you can see, if we go to our confirm email.cs file, it references identity user instead of application user. So let's go to confirm email.cs and look at the code. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is a mass replace. I'm going to select user manager, angled bracket identity user, closed angle bracket because that seems to come up a lot. I don't advise using this function often but in this case I'm going to take the risk simply because if you make a mistake and you don't know what you're doing it could cause it could break things and you're not going to know where to look. So I will go to control F I mean find and replace, replacing files. Then I'm going to find identity user, user manager identity user, and replace it with application user, which is the class we created. Now replace all. It gives us a warning, and I'm going to say yes. Okay, so we made 45 replacements. And now, each of those replacements is asking for us to include the application user model. But we still want to see if there were any um, identity users we missed. So type in identity user again and find all. I'm pretty sure there are. As you can see, Sign in manager is also looking for identity user. So we'll replace sign in manager angled bracket identity user with sign in manager application user. Place in files. Replace all. 32 changes. Find and replace 
user identity user left still that isn't supposed to be there yes there is okay so whenever we see new identity user we'll just replace that with application user and once again as a warning don't do this use this functionality often this is very risky and it could cause a lot of problems actually I'll just do this I'm 90% sure this is going to cause problems. However, I'm also 90% sure that I could fix it. For example, if we were to look in our application DB context, I mean in our application user. Uh, file. This should still say identity user, but it does not. And I believe that's the only place it should be. Let's try building. And it's going to give us a list of errors because we haven't uh, included the application user in a lot of files. So basically what I'm going to do is go through all the files and replace application user with I So if you saw what I just did, ideally that's bad practice. Ideally I should use a concept called loose coupling and pass in an interface which would allow me to pass in different versions of the identity user object. But I didn't. But that's okay because at the moment we're just learning but keep in mind that there are always better ways and alternate ways to do things. But the person that implements their idea the fastest in this ever-changing uh, software development world that changes extremely rapidly will be the one that wins the market because they'll have the market advantage. So the key thing you want to do is work fast and get your idea implemented. Okay. So now that I've changed identity user references to um, application user, let's press play and see what happens. I'm actually expecting an issue. This is pre existing code, and the namespace would be from scratch app dot models dot application user. Okay, let's take a look at the managed nav to make sure we didn't miss anything.
So basically, I included it in the manage now, the reference to application user. Okay, and it's starting up. So that means we fixed the issue. However, it's saying SQL exception, invalid column name, birthday, first name, and last name. I hope you understand what happened. And if you don't, that's OK. The reason why this happened is because we updated the application model, but didn't update the database. So we had to add a migration, the application user model. So. We create the application user model to extend identity user, but we also need to update the user table. So add migration space application user. So that's the name of the new migration, and it will appear in our migrations folder over here. And we'll take a look because I expect um, the same thing that happened before to happen again with regards to. columns so as you can see here it's trying to alter the columns because we triggered some sort of bug this might have happened because at some point I might have upgraded ident the entity framework to a different version and uh, which has a different uh, size uh, column I suspect that's what happened, but it's okay. We're not going to get into it now because we want to get this done. So we'll delete the modifications to um, the tokens table. And any table that is not supposed to be modified. So different versions of Entity Framework actually have different standards, like column sizes for automatically generated stuff, as well as even the names of the functions tend to change a bit, like I mentioned previously. So you have to be a bit careful with your upgrades, because newer isn't always better. It might, in some cases, just be different. Okay, I modified it. So I've done two things I shouldn't usually do. Uh, and now I'm going to update database. Okay, boom. So now we added those tables, columns. So if we were to go to our ASP.NET user table and look at the columns, then refresh it. We'll see that there are three new columns birthday, first name, and last name, which is what we created in our extension of the identity user um, model in our models folder, our application user class. So it added it automatically without us having to create this functionality from scratch. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, so that's great. We're logged in. So now let's create a new user because we already know that uh, test user works. So let's log out. 
Okay, so we click on register to create a new user, and then we get the neat, this error. Unable to resolve service for type Microsoft.ASP.NetCore identity.UI services I email sender while attempting to activate from scratch areas identity pages account register model. So if you recall before, by default, there's a default uh, email page because email sender hasn't been configured. But since we changed a lot of the configurations, um, it broke this because it's not no longer using um, the default email sender since we changed the actual um, identity user configurations. So this is a misconfiguration that we have to go back and fix. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is stop the application from running. Create a new folder called services. Add folder services. Within that folder, we're going to create a new class. And we will call that class auth message sender.cs. This is going to be the class that we use to send an authentication message to our users. Okay, and then we're going to write the following code in our auth message sender. It's going to implement the interface I email sender, and that interface requires two methods a public auth message sender constructor as well as a public task send email async that receives the email subject and message and returns the task. At the moment it's not doing anything, but ideally we would um, call an email service from within the send email uh, task in order to send the email in reality. But for now, the next thing we have to do is go back to our startup.cs and then add the following line of code after our um, application user code. So we'll automatically couple the iEmail sender interface with the OS message center sender uh, class that we just created. What this does is uh, implement something called dependency injection and loose coupling. So whenever we pass into a controller the ICE email sender um, interface, it'll automatically um, send in the auth message center sender class. By doing this and passing in the interface rather than the class directly, by just changing this association here, we could swap out the auth message sender class for some another class. So that requires less coding for modifying of the code uh, later on. It makes the code more maintainable. But don't worry about that now because we're just uh, focusing on learning this stuff. So now if we were to press play, our application would start up. Now if we were to log out and register. We would get the register screen. So the issue that occurred previously stopped occurring. So let's go test3 at gmail.com. Enter in your password. And then register. And then boom. Our new user type was able to be created. And if we check the database data in the ASP.NET users table, we will see we now got a test3 user. However, do you see an issue here? If we scroll to the right, we'll notice that the first name, last name, 
are null and the birthday is a default birthday. We don't want this. We want to be able to enter in that information when we create a new user. So let's get along.